Hi, I'm Matt Olin. And I'm Brittany Goodman, and we're members of the 2014 Fargo Film Festival Committee. Welcome to the 2014 Fargo Film Festival Preview Show. Here's an inside look at this year's festival. This year's 14th annual Fargo Film Festival will take place Tuesday through Saturday, March 4th through the 8th. This year we had a festival record 281 entries from dozens of different states and many foreign countries. The Fargo Film Festival is committed to showcasing high quality independent films and giving opportunities to filmmakers to show their work in the state of the art and historic Fargo Theater, as well as the fantastic intimate second screen next door to the main theater called Fargo Theater Off-Broadway. Films will be shown in seven categories, narrative feature, narrative short, documentary feature, documentary short, experimental, animation, and student. The festival also contains informational seminars in addition to networking opportunities and provocative lunch panel discussions featuring filmmakers, film academics, and people in the film industry. More than anything, the festival is about movies. Movies that entertain and inform, movies that provoke thought and spark discussion. The venues for this year's festival are the beautiful and historic Fargo Theater, which is our main venue. And our second venue will be the popular and intimate second screen Fargo Theater Off-Broadway, located right next to the original Fargo Theater in downtown Fargo. For the festival's first 13 years, the Fargo Theater's former executive director, Margie Bailey, along with current executive director, Emily Beck, and members of the various film festival judging committees have been committed to expanding the audience for the festival. The festival will open Tuesday, March 4th with a special kickoff press conference at noon, at which time Best of Show winners will be announced. There will be luncheon panel discussions at 102 Broadway, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at noon. On Saturday night, around 10 or 11 p.m., after all screenings are done, there will be a final after-festival post-party at a to-be-determined location in downtown Fargo, where filmmakers, festival goers, and festival volunteers can gather. On Thursday night, March 6, once again, at the All-Star Bowl in Moorhead, it will be the third annual Bunny Lebowski Pro-Am Invitational, featuring bowling and good times. Before the night screenings each day, there are pre-parties at various downtown locations starting at 5 p.m. These locations will be Beef Steak Club on Tuesday night, Mezzaluna on Wednesday, John Alexander's on Thursday, Plains Art Museum on Friday, and the Hotel Donaldson on Saturday night. Well, let's talk about the festival now. Brittany, I thought the quality was outstanding this year. You and I served on uh, a couple committees, did a lot of pre-screening, and again, almost 300 entries, that's a record. Tell me about your thoughts on the quality and the number of entries and what people can expect. 
Well, I actually think it's the best fest yet. Uh, again, over 300 entries. Every year we get more. I think one reason we have more entries this year is the implementation of Without a Box. Mm -hmm. We did that a couple of years ago, and it makes it really easy for filmmakers to submit their films. They do it all online. Yeah, it really has increased, but it's increased our work too, because you and I both did some pre-screening for some com committees, and we do that to kind of weed out maybe some of the films that aren't probably going to screen at the festival, so that the regular committee doesn't have to watch everything like documentary feature. Um, and, and tell me how that goes as well. Well, I can speak from uh, the narrative short category, which we were both on. Yeah. Um, we had over 90 yeah. entries, and if we had not had some pre-screeners, everybody on that committee would have to watch 90 short films. In a weekend. In a weekend. <laughs> we like each other, but... Not that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we've got some really good filmmakers coming. How does having filmmakers here supporting their films, do you think, help the festival and give it that energy? Oh, it gives it a tremendous amount of energy. Um, I know the people that go to the festival really enjoy meeting the filmmakers. Uh, we have students in film studies programs here that want to meet people that are actually actively making films. Um, I enjoy having them on the panel discussions. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy going to the movies when the filmmaker or a star is there and you get to do a Q&A with them. You yep. learn a lot. Yep. And we will have a lot of the filmmakers here, some of the actors. We do have some special guests that we're kind of working on as we tape this, so we can't tell you about all of them. But I can tell you about one person, that's Roger Moore. Uh, for people who read the Fargo Forum, Roger is the Orlando Sentinel film critic. He is widely syndicated, widely read. Um, you can see him in the Fargo Forum almost every Friday. Roger and I go way back to our days in Grand Forks working in public radio. That's where he got his start, writing reviews for the Grand Forks Herald. Then he went to Knoxville, Tennessee, and now he's in Orlando. And I know you're on Facebook with him now. We read his reviews. He's going to be great, and people are going to enjoy uh, listening to him on panel discussions. Um, we have an opening night is a big night on Tuesday, March 4th. We're going to show Bending Steel. This is the documentary feature winner. Uh, it was made by some filmmakers on the East Coast, and it's a fantastic film, Brittany. Tell us about it and how odd the subject matter is, but somehow you're just into it. Well, it's a documentary about a modern-day man who is pretty unassuming. Uh, Chris Schenk. Chris Schenk. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be an old-fashioned strong man. So the Bending Steel title right. is really about him bending steel. And uh, it takes you through the process of him trying to do that and culminates with him doing a performance at Coney Island. It's very touching. And, and the way the filmmakers edit this film, you are into him. You want to see if he succeeds or fails. And that's all the skill of a documentary filmmaker to make you care about this person. We, we hear about how maybe his parents don't really support him so well. So you really get that feeling of, this is, this is a guy trying to change his life, and it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, and it's, it's a subject I don't think has ever no. been tackled. That's why it's amazing. Yeah. And he's coming. He's coming. The producer of this film and Chris Schenk will be at the Fargo Theater. Chris is actually going to bend steel on the Fargo Theater stage. You will not want to miss that Tuesday, March 4th. So let's take a look at a clip now from the documentary feature winner, Bending Steel. That's good. Good job. When you learn to bend steel, you just, it feels like you can overcome almost anything. When we're setting up to do the bend, always think about them looking at us and how they're gonna see the bar. Okay, we look, look, at your, look at your positioning. Keep going, keep going a little bit more. Now, I'm the audience. I can see what's going you on. See I can end. see the bend. I Feet positioning is the same, you. but I just it's rotated. It's the same, but you just rotated. Right. Now the crowd can see what you're doing. Right. They're there to see a show. Much better. They can see your face. They can see your arms straining. Big pull. Good job. There it goes. Ah. This is nearing the point past 90 degrees. I'll get to the point where I'll close that. Yes, Ben.
Steel is hard. They build bridges, they build buildings out of it. It holds up, it's sturdy. There's something very simple, something austere about it. It's you against the metal. Human beings weren't meant to bend steel. Well, let's talk about the narrative feature category. I was on that committee. Uh, Matt, you weren't on that committee, right? But I've seen about five or six of the films yeah. by now, yeah. What a strong category. Um, I think it's the strongest narrative feature year we've I ever agree. had. I agree. Um, of the films that you've seen, what are the ones that stand out? I was just amazed that not only your winning film, but your honorable mention, and even the others down the line were strong. Narrative feature is the hardest thing to pull off in filmmaking. You are responsible for so many actors, technicians, anything can go wrong. I That doesn't mean documentaries aren't easy to make. Narrative features are hard to pull off when you don't have a Hollywood budget. I like Mad Ship a lot. Uh, I haven't seen Little Tin Men. I know you want to talk about that. You'll Be a Man, a film from France is great. Our winner, Three Mile Limit from New Zealand is outstanding. This uh, Putzel, shot in New York City. Melanie Linsky is in that. She's a name actress. It's just, it's just great. We finally really have narrative feature with that depth that narrative short and documentary feature have. And Little Tin Men, a lot of those people are coming, correct, Brittany? Yes, um, I believe on Friday night, mm -hmm. we have the director, Matthew Perkins, and the star of Little Tin Man, Aaron Bielner. And I really can't wait to meet them both. Now here's a clip from our narrative feature winner, Three Mile Limit. Welcome. Welcome to the fifth form social. Now remember that for the waltz, the boys may take the girls firmly, but gently by the waist and hand. And at all other times, boys and girls must remain at least 18 inches apart. Ready, please, Mr. Music? Imagine you'll be paid for this, this, this travel, Steve. He does it for the love of music, and that's what I respect about him. How's life at the ad agency? Oh, the pay's good. But they treat you like crap to make up for it. How'd you like to sell commercials on a station you'd actually like to listen to? I've heard this before. Have you got a boat? Have I got a boat? Got a transmitter? Yep. Got one of them? I've heard that before too. For about three bloody years. No, really. I've got a good lead on one. DJs? Twelve fellas lined up already. Sick of playing the same old pension of music. Want to stir things up, play rock and roll. We just stick these up. Why the urinals are broadcasting out? <laughs> You're bloody shameless. So where are these auditions then? Broadcasting house, of course. Okay, gents. Work as you can, fellas. Now let's move to narrative short. Brittany, you and I were both on this committee. In fact, we recruited you to be on this committee. You served on two committees. You're just a tireless worker, and I want to thank you for that. You're such a great uh, uh, festival co-chair and, and juror. And Lisa Feynman, our friend, has chaired this committee for two years, and I don't know what she does, but she <laughs> finds films under nooks and crannies in New Zealand and Ireland and everywhere and Australia, and we had over 90 films to look at. That's almost one-third of the entrance in, yeah. in this festival. Boy, there were some great films. The Interviewer is our winner from Australia, but even the films 10 and 20 down the line oh are gosh. awesome, aren't they? Tell yeah. us about some of them. Absolutely. Well, I really enjoyed Foxes. Mm -hmm. It was an Irish film, and it 
I don't want to give too much away because the plot is kind of very important to it, but very well shot. It could have won this category easily, I think. Also, Night Shift yeah. is... New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand, and it is just a touching portrait of a woman who works in an uh, airport. airport. And she's homeless. And she's homeless, yeah. and you don't really know that at the beginning. Yeah, all festival goers, please watch a lot of these narrative shorts. I think almost 30 narrative shorts made it into this festival, including our winner, the interviewer out of Australia. This is gonna be a crowd pleaser. It's about a guy who goes in for a job interview and something really strange happens. How can you verbalize that? Well, I don't wanna verbalize no, it because it gives away the, the twist. He's, but it's he, not your normal interview, let's just say. He's interviewed by someone he's not expecting to be interviewed by, and it really is really a, a great film. So let's now take a look at a clip from our narrative short winner out of Australia, The Interviewer. After you. You sit here, and I sit here. As your boss, <sighs> nervous. Ah, uh, it can be scary. Go for a, a new job. What or coke? Um, water, thanks. Uh, are, are you sure? Water's fine. Uh, coke better. Cheers. Well, Matt, the quality of the student films gets better every mm -hmm. year, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, the technology is there now for students to make good films on low budgets, and that's what we're seeing with the student category. And yeah, our, our student winner uh, really blew me away. Yeah. Uh, Kevin McMullen, first prize. First prize. What'd you think of that? I love that film. Just a fascinating film about this little boy. And it, it, it's a, a Kevin's from um, Columbia University. That's where he's out of. And just a great film. People are gonna love this film. And another film people are gonna love is White Earth, made by a filmmaker from Stanford. And it takes place in the Bakken. Tell us about that. And the cinematography is oh, gorgeous. The cinematography is gorgeous. Um, my favorite parts of White Earth are when they focus on the one little boy yeah. who is basically left at home yeah. alone all the time while his dad works on the Bakken. It was really heartbreaking to me. We've, we've had several films in this festival focusing on the oil fields in North Dakota. So there's a real regional angle here. And White Earth is told from the mouths of kids whose parents are working in the oil field. So people are gonna really love this film. And now for a clip from our winning film, First Prize. <laughs> Strange, liar, crazy, he thought not. eternally redeemed in the eyes of his peers and hailed a hero of modern science. A newspaper frenzy followed, along with international fame and invitations to dine with presidents. We're back and we're now going to talk animation, which has become a very strong category. We have had Oscar-winning animated shorts, Oscar-nominated animated shorts, not this year, but that doesn't mean we don't have great films. Sleight of Hand is our winner out of Australia. Stop motion animation. Can you imagine how much work this took? Oh, I'm blown away by this, this short film. I really, and animation is not usually my favorite category. I'm just going to say it. But I really like this film. Yeah, and there's a lot of good animation. I know that is a very popular category for people that come to the festival. So let's take a look at a clip now from our animation winner out of Australia. And just like the interviewer, it's called Sleight of Hand.
Well, now let's talk about a category that some people shy away from. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of it. <laughs> they don't know what it is. Experimental, because it's experimental. Yeah. Um, experimental is kind of a category it's hard to describe, but it's anything that does something a little out of the ordinary than I would say your narrative normal structure. Not a typical film. narrative structure, typically. Yeah. A lot of times people use found footage, don't they, Brittany? They use footage from all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I think we have some found footage ones in this year's. But my favorite is actually the category winner, mm -hmm. F-Line. Mm -hmm. Now, Sylvia Turkin has been to the festival she has, before. former winner. Former winner. And I really liked uh, F-Line. It is it's kind of a quiet film. Mm -hmm. It's kind of unassuming. But it's, it's a beautiful experimental film about streetcars in San Francisco, which is where Sylvia's from. And now for a clip from the winning film, F-Line. And we're back, final category, documentary short. Our friend Tracy Dominic has done a nice job with this category. This is a category that maybe doesn't get the prestige that documentary feature gets, but we have a couple really interesting films. We have a lot of interesting films, but two specifically are Africa-based that I think people are gonna find really interesting. One is called Duke County. That was not the winner, but that filmmaker, Jordan Campbell, is coming. Deb Dawson is gonna bring her. And then another film from Ethiopia by some Netherlands filmmakers, that's our winner, called Framing the Other. Tell us about this one. Hard to watch, but fascinating. Really hard to watch, really makes you think. Um, it is about tourists that mm -hmm. go to Ethiopia to see the Mercy Tribe, particularly the women in the Mercy Tribe. And why is that? Well, these women put plates in their, in their lips and in their mouths. And, you know, that's, that's cool. But... At the same time, because people are coming to pay for photographs, they start to make their jewelry more elaborate. They put on a show yeah. for the tourists. And it really questions that type of tourism. Right, yeah. It, it's a fascinating film, and the tourists interact with these women. They, they make their, their tongue plates, right, or, or lip plates. Yeah. Uh, just very elaborate, and it's hard to watch. It's very hard to watch someone's face looking like the women have their face. But once you get into it, you understand why they're doing it, and it's their tradition. It's their tradition, but I think what disturbed me is the tourists not yeah. really understanding, and they, they weren't really trying to really have a, a genuine interaction with the women. They just paid them the money and then kind of went away. And they got the, their pictures. Yeah, yeah, they got their pictures. But the one woman that's featured, I think she does go through somewhat of a transformation. So I liked that. Yeah. Now let's take a look at our clip from our documentary short winner, Framing the Other. And we also finally want to mention the two minute movie contest. Our friend Greg Carlson has done a great job with this. Friday night, March 7th, main theater, starting about 9.30 p.m., and it gets raucous, doesn't it? It does. Uh, uh, there's a line outside the oh. door for, like, all the way down Broadway to get into the two-minute film contest. Yeah. 
and the quality of this uh, contest has gotten really good over the years. Greg has really reached out uh, beyond the Fargo-Moorhead community to other filmmakers. It tends to be high school and college students, and the technology of today makes it easier for kids to make these films, and we're looking forward to it, aren't we? Absolutely. I can't wait. Well, that concludes the 2014 Fargo Film Festival preview show. Remember to check our websites for ticketing and festival pass information at www.fargofilmfestival.com or www.fargotheater.org or call the theater at 701-239-8385. We'll see you at the festival March 4th through 8th. And remember, why go to Cannes when you can go to Fargo. We'll see you at the festival. So long.